Allow me to read while you're standing in the book of John, the sixth chapter. John 6 and 43. Three, three different verses that I will read. Three different passages. John 6 and 43. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourself. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. Draw him. John the 12th chapter and the 32nd verse. And if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw. Will draw all men unto me. Please look at the last clause of that verse. Will draw all men unto me. Today something like a phenomenal magnet is fixing to happen in this crowd. Will draw, will draw, will draw. Titus 2 and 11. For the grace of God which bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. What an incredible statement. First I read to you that God will draw all men. Titus said the grace of God hath appeared to all men. One last verse before you're seated and it's in Genesis, I think the sixth chapter and the third verse. And it just simply says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. I want you somehow to magnify the Lord today because something is going to happen in the house. I want you to start thinking something is going to happen in the house. Something is going to happen in this place today that is unique. If you are going to preach with me and somehow try to fulfill the will of God, give the Lord a shout of praise before you're seated today all across the house. Come on, raise it just a little bit. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to preach to you today that in my lifetime there has been a lot of changes that I have seen. There has been so many incredible improvements in life. Until it is staggering. When you consider, and I don't think I'm that old, and I understand that old age is considered 15 years older than whoever you are. So I am not old today. But I was born in a house without electricity. And I remember as a child... Us listening to a radio. And to listen to the radio, we had to tie a wire on it and run it out the window and drive a stake in the ground. And some of you are looking at me like, my God, I did come over on the Mayflower, yes. And you tied a piece of wire to that iron post in the ground in order to receive all of the static and a little bit of voice that you were going to receive. Now, on Friday night sometime, we would listen to boxing. And between you never knew where they were knocked out or not because you just every once in a while hear something. And yet, in this generation right here today, I have an iPhone and an iPad that will bring from across the world music and anything that you want and just the flip of a button. 
And soon, in a few weeks, I will have a new website that I will be able to reach the world with my ministry. And when I considered that just a few years ago, that I was in Houston at St. Luke's Hospital, and they opened me up. And the year 2001 that they did my heart surgery, only 15,000 of those surgeries was done in America that year that I was operated on. And yet the only reason I'm standing here before you today is the advancement of medical science that allowed me to live. I should not be here but by the education and advancement of a generation, I stand before you today preaching the way that I'm endeavoring to preach. I have a nine-year-old grandson that 15 years ago they tell us, the doctor said, if he would have been born 15 years ago, if he would have survived, he would have been a total invalid. But now because of a port in his side that that runs all the way into his heart and every few days he is awakened to go to school by a needle run in his side that pumps a life necessary fluid into his body. Outside of it, he could not survive. Many of you today stand here or sit here and your advancement of, of your life is because of the education and the research of our world and surgery and medication that you would have not survived in just a few years past. Recently, the scientific world has declared that undoubtedly there was something that happened many Times ago, an explosion in the universe. And now they're saying possibly there was some kind of in the beginning. God said, let there be, and there was. It would seem that with this kind of understanding and generation, that we would come to the place to solve our social problems and our moral problems, our, our economical problems and the problems of our generation. But desperately we seek and we're in trouble and we search as we are lost through the night time waiting and trying to find an answer that will come. But with all that we can do, we cannot save ourselves. Somehow, I beg you to preach with me today. Because in this building today, something is going to happen. That is beyond anything that I have mentioned here so far today. Something called the presence of Almighty God is going to enter this building and do its best to reach somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Now, it may not mean as much to you, but when I stand here and tell you that I stand here with titanium in my heart, that I could not live without it. But with as great as my doctors were, they could not offer me anything called hope. Are called grace, are called salvation, are called mercy. But something in this building today is here that's going to say grace and mercy and hope and deliverance. Somebody clap your hands before the Lord. I remember preaching in my beginning years to generations or congregations that had not even graduated from high school in the early days of Pentecost. But now it's not unusual to preach and there be doctors in the building and lawyers and scientists. We've come a long way. But one thing we cannot do without. 
I preached in the buildings where there was sawdust on the floor. And I preached to where there wasn't anything modern. But regardless of how modern we are today, there's one thing we cannot do without. And that is the only thing that God said, I will not let you do. And that is nobody can draw somebody to me but me. No, nothing will ever happen. But God said. Oh, I don't think you catch what I'm trying to say. Is nobody. I love to come to Jackson simply because there's no place like it. Boy, you all know how to sing and you know how to worship and you know how to shout and you know how to dance. But there's one thing you can't do and you can't draw anybody. God said, I reserve that for myself. But that's why I'm going to tell you, if he decides to touch you before I get through preaching, you need to get up from where you are and head to the front because somehow nothing is greater. This may be the first time you've ever been in this building. But if you feel something uh, that feels like God, don't take the chance to sit there and say, I'll wait till after church. I'll wait till he gets through preaching. He just simply said, I might not always strive with you. But don't ever forget, I'm the only one. Who can strive with you? But he said, I might start drawing you. I might at some moment decide to reach out and touch you. It's at that moment. That's the classic moment of your life. You see, the classic moment of my family's life was when my daddy, who was an alcoholic, my mother, who had tried to commit suicide a number of times, my daddy, who hated Pentecost and any kind of church, had my mother drug out of an altar. It was that moment in life that God decided to touch him. You see, nothing could happen. And God had to say, I believe I want to touch you and see how you will respond. Come on. You don't decide if you want to be saved. You don't decide if you want salvation. You don't decide just to wake up one day and say, you know, I believe I'm going to change my life and I'm going to start living right. That's not what the book said. It said God has to decide to draw you first. So the greatest moment of your life is not your car. It's not your house. It's not your money. It's the moment that divinity touches you. Woo. Come on, we're not going to be here all day. It's that moment when all of a sudden something touches you. I don't know. Maybe I think I can say it here at First Pentecostal Church. Oh, God, I'd like to see some more services that while I was preaching... People had come running down the aisle 
with tears and snot dripping from their face uh, and saying, God, I just felt something. Uh, what do I do? Uh, I'll tell you, friend, uh, if you feel something uh, and it feels like God, respond to it. 